uh, a little bit later. Like we're gonna go a little meta on like production because I'm, sure. I'm impressed by the production quality that you have. Yeah, wh wherever you want to go, man. And and I would say for you, I think a you're doing a great job. And I think the biggest thing that you're doing is you didn't just sit on the couch and say, wow, wouldn't it be great if I could talk to people and put up these interesting conversations? You, I remember you emailed me about the microphone that I use. Now you, I can see your setup looks great. You got, you, you went, you took the steps, right? You took the action to actually make it happen. And right. If you think about, this is your what episode? How, what are we on? For, uh, for your thing, it's 42. 42. Think about how much you've learned from episode one. A to lot. Episode it was 42. crazy how much I'm learning. Like, and I'm, I just recently switched to video. Like I never had a video, but like, this is, I right. think my episode number five that I'm doing video. And then all of a sudden I'm realizing, Oh, like now I understand why people need makeup. Now I understand why people need yes. hair. Cause I look at myself like, ah, my hair is all messed up. Like my, my color would be like all inverted. Like you need people to like watch you. And then like there's editing and then all, exactly. all of that I have to do myself. And I was like, wow, like there's like, there's no wonder it, it takes a team of production people to actually like handle this business. Oh so, yeah, it, it does. And the fact that you're doing all of those jobs, just like I am doing now, when I do an interview, I'm setting up the interview, I'm doing the audio, I'm doing everything, I'm editing it. Um, when I was at HBO, we had a large production team that used to do that. Um, but just the fact that you're getting your hands dirty, you're learning so much about the yeah. process and making it better and better every time. And I think that's the key because like I said, if you just have the idea, wouldn't it be great to do this? You're not going through those, that step-by-step -step execution and learning each time. Exactly. Um, so there's yeah, much so. more to it there's like a podcast hosting services like whoa what is this like what do you need to pay for like and then the whole equipment i, I used to have like a usb mic you know just put it in the center like my podcast with tom was like with tom loffler was like just this sh shitty mic in the center we just put it like this and i'm like ah i wish we, we could have done like a video like as i used to uh, as i'm doing right now like this microphones like the the, the shores the standard like i had to yeah. learn about the xlr cables like the freaking mixture like all of that equipment i was like wow like i need to learn about all of that uh but yeah well since we're talking about it well let's let's go a little sure. meta and talk about equipment and then then i want to go back to hbo and uh and ask like sure. how how that deal got finalized and and and, and your and and, and their closure basically in terms of the hbo boxing but first sure. let's talk about equipment like how once you started you know venturing out on your own what i'm seeing in your videos right now and by the way do you hear me well because I, I hear some some clicks but just want no, to make you, sure sound, that you sound great perfect yeah. all right cool um i see that you have like when you do the actual sit downs i see that you have pretty much three different angles or maybe it's uh I don't know. How, how does this work? How many cameras do you have when you do the interviews and like what kind of equipment do you also carry with yourself and yes. maybe who's helping you? Yeah. So, um, it's like I said, it's, it's very different from the HBO days In the HBO days we'd have, uh, two to three cameras, um, sometimes more, and we'd have a whole team. So now that I'm doing this on my own in terms of building my on-camera profile, um, well, I've been lucky enough to have been featured on some outlets. I've been featured on camera on Fox Sports, Bleach Report Live, where I do play-by-play, -play, as you mentioned, Pluto mm -hmm. TV, where I do a debate show. So, but a lot of my work is just me finding people and putting it out there on my YouTube channel, my podcast. So, so like booking. Yeah, yeah, and, and then being able to ac actually execute the production and the interview. Um, but to answer your question, so if you're doing it like one man band style, like in terms of the way that you're talking about a more recent interview that I've done, um, yeah, sometimes I do two or three cameras. So what I like to do is uh, you want to get one obviously on your subject, and you want it to get meta. So we'll get meta. Not well, so we'll get a little bit more in the weeds about what you want to do. So. I would say get one on your subject. I like to do like a medium shot. If you watch any type of interview show, like 60 Minutes is always like a, you know, that's been around forever. And you can mm -hmm. kind of see, watch 60 Minutes, see what they do in terms of the way they set up the shots if you're someone who's trying to do this. So you want to have one of them looking at your subject, right? You're not putting the camera right in front of their eyes where they're necessarily right. looking into it. Um, you can do that for a documentary, but if you're doing an interview, you probably don't want to do that. So you want one where your subject is looking at the interviewer right? You want to leave some, some room in terms of uh, headspace, right? Because you want to kind of have them looking at that person. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to want to have your key light. You're going to have lighting, right? Right. Uh, and you're going to want to have it, something important that you brought up was you mentioned the audio that you had in one of your early interviews was just a microphone in the middle of the room and you two are far away. That's not going to be good audio when you go exactly. back and look at it. Now it's passable for like a lot of things and you can... Uh, the good thing about the environment we're in now, so many things are raw, right? If you look at social media, if you just go up to someone and, and you have your iPhone, mm -hmm. uh, you can get good content and that could blow up and go viral. But if you were trying to do a higher production, you're mm -hmm. going to want to invest in what they're, what's called lav mics. That's where you, you clip it onto your shirt, 
Yeah. And it has the wire. Um, if you have a mic like you have right there, or I have like right here, mm -hmm. um, that's going to increase your, your audio and, instead of just doing like the mic that comes on the Mac. Not mm -hmm. that it's not that it's bad, but if you look at the positioning of it, it's just further away. It's not as good as picking up the sound. Right, and you have to always make sure that you're next to it. Yes, can, exactly. Not really exactly. Move, if you have a lav mic uh, that you can clip on, then it's going to be here. And where you know, if your subject moves exactly. around, it's going to follow them. Um, so I would have one camera on your subject. I would have another one on the interviewer, in which I've been doing. I put it on me. Now, mm -hmm. if you look at 60 Minutes or, or any other show, sometimes you'll notice what's called a dirty shot, which means the subject or the, the person interviewing, you'll see like a part of their shoulder maybe talking to the other person. That's optional. You can do that. Uh -huh. But what's, what's good about that is then you kind of see the dynamic where you see a little bit of one person the, behind, from behind and then you see the other person looking at them. Right. It's optional. You can either do uh, you know, shots of each person or you can, you can get a dirty shot of that. And then in terms of what your question about the third camera, I usually like to have a third camera, which is like a wide shot mm -hmm. um, where you can see maybe more of the background. You can see both subjects talking to each other. You can see the chair. And what I personally like to do, it's personal preference, is my wide shot, I usually like to have it called a, what's called a dirty shot. And what I mean by that is you can see the production equipment visible. You might see a light in the corner. You might see a lav mic or if you have a boom mic mm -hmm. as maybe a backup audio, you can see that as well. Mm -hmm. I just think that gives a cool little behind the scenes type look and yeah. sets the scene a little bit because you know, you're, you're sitting there, you're talking to someone, um, but now you can kind of see like, oh, all the work and stuff that went into this. And gives all you the a sense that you're actually in the room. Exactly. Yeah. Like a fly on the wall type of, exactly. of shot. So in terms of the cameras that I like to use, that's usually my three camera setup, one on the subject, one on the interviewer, and maybe like a wide, mm -hmm. a wide dirty shot. That would be my like fantasy to actually like, if, if I can like continue doing this podcast to do it in that exact format and just invite my guests to like a studio and like sit them in the chair and just have these conversations. Uh, that would be like, I feel like the goal for me to have that format. But then I'm thinking like, all the editing that could take imagine like I'm struggling with just like a webcam right now, like just to make sure everything looks good. But then you have three cameras and you have to combine the shots. And then as far as I know, the audio goes separately, right? Like audio is, you need to like actually put the audio on the cameras. It's not like cameras have the connection right away. Yes, correct. No. So it, it depends how you're doing it, obviously. But if you're going to, you know, you could put like a shotgun mic, like on top of your camera, and then uh -huh. you could feed the, the audio into your camera. But if you're going to do lav mics, you're right. probably going to do that into what's called a recorder. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be where your audio is. So you're, the good audio will be separate from the video clips. And then you, um, you want to make sure that like your lips are moving in sync with the audio. Like that's right. The, so you have to sync it. So I would say uh, two things real quick. One about what you said about how you would love to try it. I don't think you're as far away from trying it as you think you are because you're doing this on a webcam right now, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you, and I'm guessing you own like a smartphone, like an iPhone or something. Yes, correct. Okay, so now you have two cameras already ready to go. So if mm -hmm. I was you, you already have your mic and your, your headphones. I would, if I was you, you could set up right now in, in your living room. One camera is on, your webcam is on you. Your mm -hmm. iPhone is going to be shooting the other person. Mm -hmm. And your audio, you have one mic. You only need to get one other mic. And then you sync it in post and you have a two-camera interview, right? It's not as hard as, you don't want to overcomplicate it. Eventually, you'll yeah. want to up the production quality, just like you've done on, on your podcast and all the work. But just to get your hands dirty and, and to get the workflow, I would suggest trying that. Call a friend over, set up two chairs, webcam uh -huh. on one guy, iPhone on the other, and, and, and sync it in post. And okay. uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll, and uh, uh, I'll do I, that. And I wanted to, sorry, to answer your question, the second part was about uh, how to sync it in post, right? Mm -hmm. So if, uh, if you use the Adobe Creative Cloud, um, Adobe Premiere is, is a great program where you could take the three different videos that you have from different angles and your audio. And there's a thing called create, if you highlight them all, you do a thing called create multi-track sequence. Mm -hmm. And it will do the work for you where it will sync the camera angles and the audio. And then what you need to do, what you, all you need to do is you can watch each angle and just switch between each one. Okay. Um, so that's a really, really helpful tool, especially if you're new to syncing because otherwise doing it manually, it's a little bit harder because you have to find the sound waves and match them up, right. um, which is a little bit more of a, a tedious process. Um, but if you can do the multi-track sequence and sync them up, um, that'll definitely make it easier. How long does it take you to actually like after you conducted, you know, got your footage, footage, like to actually edit everything and have a prepared product. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good question. I think it depends on what you're trying to do with your, with your, with your final product. So for me, it, it depends. I made, for example, some of my interviews that you see on my YouTube page, I've done like a video session like this and I can just throw it into Premiere. I can add the names because I want to, you know, add the, um, you know, some graphics about who each person is. Mm-hmm. I can uh, maybe add some music and a couple transitions. That's easy, right? And then you just throw it up on YouTube. If you want to do something that's more raw like that because you're just getting information out there, mm-hmm. that's the process. Now, if you want to do something that's a little bit more of like production value, um, that's going to take longer, right? That could, I mean, that depends on, on what you want to do with it. That could take days or weeks because you want to add, let's say you want to add music. Uh, if you're talking to a fighter or really anyone, you might want to add B-roll on top of it. So as you, as the people are speaking, you can add footage, what's called B-roll of something mm-hmm. that they're talking about. If it's a fighter, a lot of times it's training B-roll, right? So you have a fighter talking about his preparation and then you see him as he's talking, you see him hitting the heavy, you know, the uh, speed bag or heavy bag or whatever. So right. it, it, I would say it depends on, on what your final product is that you're looking to make. And, and if you're doing like a feature, which I used to do a long time, a long time uh, at HBO was you want to write the script. You're going to have voiceover. You're going to have music. Um, you're going to have, you know, professional graphics, B-roll, things like that. So that can take obviously a lot longer.